Hello, my name is Igor. 3D printing is my hobby at home, but now we are in my workplace in St. Ishan University in Budapest. I'm recording here with the permission. And the reason is the small memory filtration unit behind me. Just to clear something before I continue, uh, probably you don't need a turbulence promoter for memory filtrating, but this method can be used to design and 3D print similar spiral helix objects like a conveyor screw or some kind of spiral mixer or similar. So, a few years ago, we noticed that if we put some kind of turbulence promoter or static mixer inside tubular membrane, it has very positive effect to the membrane filtration. And in experimental phase, uh, we needed different diameter pitch ratio, different geometry, and it was very, very hard to find a manufacturer who will produce this for us because we needed only one or two pieces of each geometry. And nowadays, the 3D printing technology becomes so affordable that I decided to give it a try. So in this video, I am designing and 3D printing a spiral helix turbulence promoter, which I will use in member filtration. Software I'll use is Design Spark Mechanical. My primary software for design is Fusion 360, but designing this spiral turbulence promoter is so complicated that I decided to try different software. Design Spark Mechanical is uh, free software. It has some limitation, but for 3D printing it's fine. And you will see, I will show you the full design process. It is so simple, so quick that basically I would be happy to somebody show me some similar simplicity method in Fusion 360. Okay, well, let's get started. Let's change the view first and then start with the rectangle. Define the rectangle from the center to the origin. Mm, 1.4 by 6.5 millimeter is the base for my turbulence promoter for the spiral helix. And then pull to revolve, uh, select the axis to rotate about. It will be the Z axis. Now let's set the edge. And important to enable revolve helix. This creates us the spiral path. Okay, pitch will be 30 millimeters, 13 millimeters and height 113. This will give us 10 rotations. Okay, same with the second edge, 130 millimeters. Third edge and fourth edge. Now we have a base and we have four surfaces, spiral helix surfaces. But this is not the object yet, this is not solid object. To become a solid object, we need to close this with this pull tool. Now it is closed and as you can see, it changed the color and this is now the solid body ready to be 3D printed. Theoretically, because in this version it is very hard to print this because it is very long, very thin object for 3D printing in almost any direction. These are my first failed prints when I tried to print horizontally. The orange version came down from the bed because of small contact surface. Then I add the brim and the support. And that's how I got these yellow versions. But uh, when I removed the support, I got a very ugly surface, which cannot be used for turbulence promoter. So I decided to print it vertically somehow, but I didn't want to use huge blocks as a support. So I decided to print four turbulence promoters in same time and they will support each other. This means I will copy this four times. Let's change the view from the bottom. Okay and I have to move them. Not this one. By eight millimeters maybe. And now there is a trigger part. Somehow I have want to connect this. It will be connected with rectangle, different rectangle from the center. Mm. 
And now we need a rectangle which will just a little bit touching this surface of the spiral helix. 3.8, maybe 3.8. Just touching, not too much. Approximately 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeter overlap is enough. Because when it will be printed, I will show you later in a slicer, the line of the printing should be not continuously. It will be easier to separate it at the end. So that's the reason. Let's extrude this. But I want to add enable no merger. I want this separate object, these five objects, because later maybe I will need some modifications so it is easier if they are separated. Pull 130 millimeters. Great. And now this object is ready for 3D printing. Let's check it in a slicer. I loaded the object into the Prusa slicer. And this is the important part. Let's let's slice it. Let's brim. It is very important. Also, uh, I use first layer height 0.3 millimeter to get better adhesion between brim and the object. Slice. And this is it. Let's see the preview of the printing. And this is the most important part now. This is the important part. So you can see these layers are touching each other, but they are not continuous. Because, for example, if it would go here and then here, if overlap would be too big, then it would be very, very hard to separate these. So touching each other, but they are not continuous lines from this rectangle to this turbulence promoter here. So this overlap is, is fine for my settings. So this is what you have to check, because it will be printed fine, even if the overlap is too big, but it will be very, very hard to separate it at the end. Okay, let's generate the G-code and uh, start with the 3D printing. This is my first print with PTG. It was printed without problem, only some stringing uh, appeared, but that was cleaned later in post-processing. Also, I tried in uh, PLA. Uh, in this version, I added some holes because I need some experience with this version. Uh, this was better in quality, but it was too weak. I will show you that later. And this is, again, the version with the holes in PTG. Uh, here you can see a lot of stringing appeared. I tried to use a fan, I tried to reduce the temperature bus stringing was still there. It was removed in post-processing at the end. Also, I printed a bigger version, the 14 mm diameter. As you can see, it was printed four and a half hours. After a printing, first thing is to take off the brim. It will go down very easily. And then if I move these spiral objects a little bit, they will break off from the middle support. But it is important to follow my instructions I mentioned a few minutes ago, that overlapping to be very, very small, those layers uh, only touching each other, not to be continuous. In that case, it will go down very easily. And these are my printed versions. I noticed that the break tool is especially the PLA version. This is the support in the middle. PTG is stronger. <laughs> to get stronger objects, I coated them with the epoxy resin. Let's break this failed print too. This is PTG. It's flexible and it's quite strong. Oh, 
Oh, okay. So PETG is definitely better material for this than PLA. But I will combinate it with epoxy. Since PLA breaks too easily, special diversion with the holes, I decided to coat it with the epoxy resin. I used XTC 3D two component epoxy from Smooton Company and added some acetone to raise the viscosity. It will feel better the pores in layers, resulting stronger object. I asked the company, the epoxy is not rated as food safe, at least it doesn't have a certificate, but this is not the issue for me this time because I need it only to compare with the metallic versions. But there are some other food safe rated epoxies on the market anyway. I noticed approximately 30-40% improvement in strength of 3D printed object. This is enough for me that I know it will not break inside the membrane. The PLA version is strong enough without epoxy anyway. Well, as I mentioned, I don't want to talk about membrane filtration, but the, this turbulence promoter works fine now. And I hope you find this interesting and if you like this video please don't forget to click the like button and maybe even to subscribe to my channel because in one of my next videos I will show you how to design and 3D print a static mixer. Thank you for watching. Bye.